Crosstown Motors, located in the heart of the North Country, wants to be your first choice for your next new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat, or pre-owned vehicle. Doing business in New England for more than 50 years, we continue to provide exceptional sales and service with a down-home feel. Part of the Auto Saver Group and home of the big deal, check us out at CrosstownMotors.net or visit us at 650 Meadow Street in scenic Littleton, New Hampshire. to the Profile School. I'm Jonathan Zisman along with Jamie Lesprince and in about 10, 12 minutes or so we'll be starting up the boys game between the engineers of Woodsville and the Profile Patriots. Our sponsors for this game, Littleton Chevrolet and Crosstown Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram and Fiat, Hadlock Group, Best Insurance and Concord Group Insurance Companies, White Mountains Community College, W.W. Berry's Transportation, Berlin City Auto Group, Maplewood Golf Course, Mountain View Dental, Mount, uh, The Little Grill, Orford Service Center, Woodsville Area Booster Club, Walker Motors, Boudreaux, Boudreaux Septic, Fireside Hearth and Leisure, Wells River Savings Bank, Cottage Hospital, Vicki Wyman at All Access Realty, Presby Energy, Colby Insurance Company, J&J Auto Care, H.P. Cummings Construction Company, Iron Furnace Brewing, Wardlaw Group, the News and Sentinel and our very own NSN Digital Download and DVD Store. Let's take a break, and we'll come back with starting lineups. You're watching the Littleton Chevrolet Crosstown Motors NSN Broadcast Network. I think college was for other people, but after a lot of hard work and thanks to an incredible support system, now I know I'm exactly where I need to be. Since 1972, W.W. Berry has been providing dependable bus and shuttle services for the people of northern New Hampshire. Located on Route 3 in Lancaster, New Hampshire, the dependable people at W.W. Berry are happy to service any of your transportation needs. They can provide bus services and shuttling for athletics, organization trips, and many other events. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Give W.W. Berry a call at 603-636-6100. Meet Phil. Phil needed an oil change, so he visited Berlin City Service. Berlin City always gives him the most reasonable, transparent pricing possible, all part of the worry-free guarantee, giving Phil much more time to worry about other things, like the clown who's definitely living in the attic. Relax, Phil. You're with Berlin City. Schedule your vehicle service at BerlinCity.com. At the Maplewood Golf Club in Bethlehem, New Hampshire, golf is not just a sport. It's a Donald Ross-designed journey through lush fairways, rolling slopes, and immaculately manicured greens. It is breathtaking views of the presidential range and crisp mountain air in your lungs. It is a fresh challenge and new opportunities on every hole, especially our legendary par 6, the 16th hole. Come play the Maplewood and discover why many golfers consider our course the jewel of the White Mountains. Visit our website to book your tea time and learn more. www.maplewoodgolfresort.com At Mountain View Dental, our state-of-the-art facility features modern equipment and technology. We offer individualized care to make your dental experience comfortable, safe, and efficient. Mountain View Dental, our family caring for yours. The Woodsville Area Booster Club is a proud supporter of all Woodsville High School athletics. We're proud to support our student-athletes in a variety of ways, including scholarships, events, awards, and much, much more. They represent themselves, their families, and the communities very well, exemplifying all that's the best about Woodsville Area schools. The Woodsville Area Booster Club wishes all of their athletic teams the best of luck. Go Engineers! The Little Grill, where fresh ingredients make great food. 
Try our Brazilian barbecue, featured every Friday and Saturday from 5 until 9 p.m. All meats cooked over a wood fire. The Little Grill, New Hampshire, that's Little Grill with an E. The Orford Service Center is a family-owned and operated business serving the Upper Connecticut River Valley for over 40 years. We are a vehicle repair and sales facility located in Orford, New Hampshire that specializes in all makes and models as well as the sales of quality pre-owned vehicles. For more information, check us out on our website at orfordservicecenter.com. Stop on by our facility on Route 10 in Orford or give us a call at 603-353-4555. Everyone at the Orford Service Center would like to wish the Woodsville engineers the best of luck. Tonight's starting lineups are being brought to you by the Hadlock Group Best Insurance and Conquer Group Insurance Companies, a fourth-generation family-owned insurance agency that's been providing local customers with auto home and business insurance since 1928. The Hadlock Group is highly involved with uh, New Hampshire's outdoor recreational programs, trails, and clubs. With the starting lineups, here is Jamie Lesprince. First, for the uh, visit in Woodsville uh, engineers, Number four, Ryan Walker. Number 11, Connor Houston. Number 13, Jack Boudreau. Number 22, Landon Kingsbury. And number 24, Connor Newcomb. Head coach, Jamie Walker. Now for the home team, Profile Patriots. Number four, Jackson Clough. Number 10, Josh Roby. Number 11, Carson Roby. Number 12, Riley Plant. Number 21, Alex Leslie. And their head coach is Mitchell Roy. Very senior-laden team. Both profile teams have lots of seniors on them, and uh, profile has been beating people by large margins this season. We'll see what happens against this Woodsville team. Yeah, this is certainly the uh, the group for profile. If they're going to do something, this this is definitely the group. They've played a lot of basketball since they were real young. Uh, assistant coach. Um, John Roby has uh, worked with these kids, you know, an ungodly amount of time with AAU and everything like that. And, of course, he's the dad of um, uh, Josh and Carson. And he, he's put a lot of time in, as, of course, uh, head coach Mitchell Roy has also. So the keys to the game for Coach Walker, he wants to have patience on offense, rebound well, and he wants to find the profile shooters. And that's a, uh, that's a must for sure for Coach Mitchell Roy. He wants to contain the guards of Woodsville. He wants to see a lot of ball movement and avoid fouls. Today's starting lineups have been brought to you by the Hadlock Group Best Insurance and the Conquer Group Insurance Companies giving back to the youth and athletic programs throughout New England. And we want to tell you that this broadcast is protected by NSN's copyright and is intended for the exclusive enjoyment of our online viewers and the unauthorized use of this broadcast, including sharing, reproducing, or distributing any content, descri uh, descriptions, or game accounts without NSN's explicit consent is strictly prohibited. So let's take a break, and we'll come back with the opening tap. You are watching the Littleton Chevrolet Crosstown Motors NSN Broadcast Network. Motors, our love of new and used Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram models is what drives us to deliver exceptional customer service at our showroom and service center in Woodsville. Even after you've driven your next car home, on your terms, Walker Motor Sales isn't finished enhancing your driving experience. To keep you safe and efficient on the road ahead, we staff an on-site car service and repair department right here in Woodsville. Curious to learn more? Contact us online, read our available reviews, or better yet, drop by our showroom on Dartmouth College Highway in Woodsville, New Hampshire. At Fireside Hearth and Leisure, our goal is to keep our customers warm and happy through our long winter season. As a family-owned and operated business, we take pride in our commitment to our customers before, during, and most importantly, after the sale. We can install a beautiful new fireplace or stove, a new chimney cap, or a video inspection of your chimney. Give us a call at 603-838-5125 for all your fireplace and chimney needs. The Good Neighbor Bank, whether at home or on the road, Wells River Savings Bank offers modern banking right here in our rural communities. We make banking easier with mobile banking and digital wallets. Open an account anytime, online or in person. And no matter where you are, our customer care center is just a phone call away. Download the Wells River Savings Bank app today and take us with you. Wells River Savings Bank, your good neighbor bank. 
I used to think college was for other people, but after a lot of hard work and thanks to an incredible support system, now I know I'm exactly where I need to be. Don't let pain or injury slow your active lifestyle. Get back in the game. Whether you have bone or joint problems or you've been sidelined by a lingering injury, Cottage Hospital Orthopedics wants to get you back to your favorite activities as quickly as possible. We believe in a patient-centered environment that focuses directly on your needs. From diagnostic and therapeutic office visits to cutting-edge computer-assisted surgical techniques, Cottage Hospital Orthopedics wants to get you back to being you, pain-free and active. Hello, sports enthusiasts. I'm Vicki Wyman, owner and broker of All Access Real Estate. Our dedicated real estate professionals serving New Hampshire and Vermont are all about connecting buyers and sellers in our beautiful communities. But today, we're cheering for our local high school athletes. Join us in supporting them as they strive for victory. Let's swing for the fences and score big together. All Access Real Estate, proud sponsor of your hometown heroes. Everything you need to stay informed about community events, town and school governments, the local business scene, student activities, and high school sports can be found in the pages of the News and Sentinel, the North Country's trusted hometown paper since 1870. Their dedicated staff provides the area with comprehensive news coverage and door-to-door -door advertising service, giving their all to produce a great paper week in and week out. To start a subscription or promote your business, stop by their office at 6 Bridge Street in downtown Colebrook, New Hampshire. Give them a call at 6 203-237-5501 or visit them online colebrooknewsandsentinel.com and we're back here at the profi profile school getting ready for the start of tonight's game and Jamie Woodsville is hoping to uh, cop their fourth straight division four state championship but the uh, profile Patriots certainly are looking like a team that can do it themselves yeah, these are probably two of the top four teams in the division, that's for sure. You know, along with Littleton and uh, Derryfield from down south. We've got, uh, we just were kind of looking at the boys game between Littleton and uh, Groveton, and they have uh, a 29 to 20 lead at halftime. Littleton scored right at the, uh, right at the buzzer. Okay, so we're going to take a break, and we'll come back. You're watching the Littleton Chevrolet Crosstown Motors NSN Broadcast Network. Continued support of local high school athletics. Mountain View Dental. Our family caring for yours. In loving memory of sports enthusiasts and dedicated professional and a true champion of Northeast Sports Network, Johnny Allen, Jr. For years, Johnny graced our airwaves with his infectious enthusiasm bringing the excitement of the game straight to your living rooms. He was more than a broadcaster. He was a storyteller who painted vivid pictures with his words. He bought himself some time, tried to cut it back inside, saw the defensive line was there, rolled to his right, and look who was wide open. You will never see a better football play in high school football than what you just Johnny's voice became synonymous with thrilling moments, capturing the highs and lows of sports with unparalleled charisma. Whether it was the roar of the crowd, the crack of a bat, or the thrill of a winning goal, he had a unique way of bringing the game to life. We invite you, our viewers and supporters, to join us in celebrating Johnny's life and contributions. Share your fondest memories, your favorite calls, and your tributes using the hashtag at Johnny Allen, the man, the myth, the legend. Thank you, Johnny Allen, for your unwavering commitment to the game, to our network, and to the hearts of all who had the privilege of hearing your voice. I used to think college was for other people, but after a lot of hard work and thanks to an incredible support system, now I know I'm exactly where I need to be. All right, so it's time to take off the gloves. And get going. That was, uh, <laughs> that was a nice rendition of the national anthem done by Alva Johnson, who plays a couple sports here. It's going to be Alex Leslie on the opening tap with uh, Landon Kingsbury. Again, this uh, 
this profile team is set up to win this year. Yeah, and between uh, Roby and Leslie, that's 27 for Roby a game and uh, 23 for Leslie. It's uh, certainly the highest scoring duo in uh, the division. Tap one by Woodsville. Connor Houston right now just holding. Coach Walker said they're going to be patient on offense. Yeah, I would think the lore of the score in the, this game is the mortal benefit Woodsville. Connor Newcomb with a three. Long rebound comes to Carson Roby. And here comes profile. Josh Roby with it right now. Him against Walker should be an interesting matchup. Clough fakes the three. Leslie is going to do a lot of offensive rebounding in this game. Expect that. Roby now hands off to Clough. Clough was a major star on the defensive side of the field up for the soccer team this year. Good patience here by profile as Leslie drives and uh, is forced into the corner of Carson Roby and it's going to be intercepted. And right back the other way. Profile in a 2-3 zone and uh, Woodville is in man-to-man -man defensively. Newcomb holding. And Walker. Now Connor Houston, good tic-tac-toe move and going up and under and making it is number 22, Landon Kingsbury. So the first points of the game go to Woodsville. Roby. He's got a good height advantage over Walker. And the pass almost reaching in for the steal is Boudreaux. He almost fouled him too. Three-pointer by Clough. No good. The long rebound is grabbed by Kingsbury. This is one of the uh, mountains that uh, Profile has to climb. They uh, Last year between uh, the two games they played against Littleton and uh, Woods, uh, Woodsville, they were 0-5. Rebound grab there by Roby. And he goes right by Walker, pulls up and hits the runner. Yeah, I think uh, certainly a, a big game for, for both teams, but I think probably more so for Profile to prove to themselves. I'm sure they feel they can win, but until you really do it. Tough pass underneath for Boudreaux, banks it up, and I'll tell you the ball movement, the two possessions they've scored has been outstanding. And it's 4-2. to two. Already a substitution. Caden Wakeham really started to improve towards the end of last season. I'm sure he's a major part of their team. This is the first ch chance I've had to look at uh, profile. Going up for the runner is Josh Roby. And he draws the foul. He didn't get the shot, but he draws the foul. And that'll be Connor Houston on the foul. So first foul is against Woodsville. Three minutes in, 4-2 to two is your score. Here on the Littleton Chevrolet Crosstown Motors Network. And Roby hits the first free throw, so he has all three points for Plant comes out, Wakeham comes in. He's got the all the first three points for profile. And Roby. Perfect from the free throw line. Four nothing, or four four is the score rather. Ryan Walker. Tough feed again. Quick ball movement. Baseline feed Kingsbury. And they had a play set up there, but profile defensed it nicely, so they pull it right back out. Connor Houston had one playoff game last year where he had six threes, or five threes, rather. Newcomb. Again, Walker. Baseline feed now Boudreaux. He didn't hold the ball long enough to get trapped. Newcomb will try a three. And the rebound is knocked out of bounds by Connor Houston. And it goes back to the Patriots as they attempt to take the lead for the first time here in the first quarter. Yeah, Woodsville being very, very patient. They're so disciplined offensively. Certainly well coached, you know. Leslie now. Or uh, Wakeham, rather, with a crossover. He loses it, but it finds its way back to Carson Roby, who, who knocks it down. So the Robies have all of the points for 
profile, and it is now 6-4 to four in favor of the Patriots. Walker drives to the basket and kind of runs into a couple of people and sent up ahead for Roby, who lays it up in good. So Josh Roby with six early points and a six-point run makes it 8-4 to four in favor of the profile Patriots. Newcomb. Goes to Kingsbury. Got a couple left-handers out there for Woodsville. Let's see if they can take advantage of that. Carson Roby for uh, profile, also left-handed. And they're going to call a hand check against Jackson Clough. So that's now two. That's one foul on each team. First game. The girls' game went to Woodsville, 51-41. Again, just working around the perimeter. Houston fakes the three. Now feeds to uh, Kingsbury, who banks it up in good. Good strong move by Kingsbury to the bounce pass, and it's 8-6. to six. Jamie Profile averaging 80 points, 80-plus 80 points a game so far. Yeah, they. Yeah, I'm actually surprised at how patient they asked seeing how all the points they've, they've been scoring. And an over and back. They're claiming that the ball was knocked out of the hands of uh, Wakeham, but I don't think it was. So now Woodsville a chance to tie it back up. By the way, in the Littleton Groveton boys game, that score was 29-20 at halftime. So there's one good thing about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the game starting a half an hour later for us. Yeah. We can give you some updates. Kingsbury from the corner. Again, they've been working it around outside the three-point line a lot. Newcomb has taken a couple of threes. Now he'll pull up just inside the three-point line. No good. And Wakeham grabs the rebound. Yeah, that was a tough shot. He tries to... Uh, Muscle is way over, gets it to an open Carson uh, Roby, tapped around, and a good play by Walker. Now Clough on the floor. Walker falls over him, and the arrow will go in favor of Profile. It's Colebrook leading by seven at halftime over uh, Pittsburgh Canaan, 30-23. to 23. The Littleton girls team won a tight game with Groveton. Both teams went into that game unbeaten. And then uh, something of an upset, Pittsburgh Canaan held on to beat uh, Colebrook in the girls' game. And a three by Roby, a little bit long, grabbed by Leslie. It's now 34-22 to 22 in the Littleton-Groveton uh, game, the boys' game. And Mike Hogan, who just came in, grabs the rebound off the miss. Eight to six with a minute 43 to go. Baseline feed Jack Boudreaux. And he's able to get it back to Ryan Walker. His sister Michaela had a heck of a game in the girls' game. Nice take. Boudreaux. Oh, Boudreaux. You know, I'll tell you, he, he draws the foul there when he has a chance to give Woodsville the lead back. Right around the middle of last season, Jack Boudreaux really started to come on offensively. And uh, he ended up scoring... Double-digit points in the final quarter of the championship win last year, and he has taken off ever. You know, he took off about halfway through last season from being a uh, an effective scorer. And yeah, he, he was uh, he was huge in that run for them last year. They returned all but one kid, I believe, right? The Davidson kid. Yeah. Graduated, which is a huge loss for uh, for Woodsville to replace. Wakeham being challenged by Connor Newcomb who had to step into the role of the, that Cam Davidson had. And they're going to call a push. But that was before Alex Leslie was able to knock that ball in the hole. And it'll go against Jack Boudreaux. They haven't used a lot of players off their bench. Hogan is about the only one. Their only loss was to unbeaten Littleton. Now in there is Danny Burnell, who's the goalkeeper on the boys' soccer team, among other things. Handed off Leslie, forces his way through, and lays it up in good. That was a 
That was a tough shot right there. He's on the board for the first time. And the lead back to uh, profile at 10 to 9. Boudreau lobs back to Kingsbury. And fed to Boudreau. Back to Walker. He pulls up from the free throw line. Doesn't get the roll. And Wakeham grabs the rebound. So we're down to 30 seconds to go here in this uh, first quarter. Trying to go to the basket. Roby, he lobs out here to Wakeham, who probably took it away from Carson Roby, but didn't take it away. He didn't lose it. Leslie feeds across for Wakeham. He'll crank the three, and that's good. First three of the ball game by Profile. They're now up by four. Again, tic-tac-toe passing. Hogan now back around. Walker pulls up from the free throw line. No good. Hogan grabs the rebound among three players as time expires in the quarter. And Profile leads it by the score of 13-9. to Presby Energy Incorporated is a family-owned and operated business that is deeply rooted in the North Country. We deliver home heating fuels, including oil, kerosene, and diesel. Presby Energy strives to provide a level of service that fully satisfies the customer's needs and exceeds their expectation. Check us out online at presbyenergy.com or call 603-823-5298. Iron Furnace Brewing is located at 115 Main Street, Franconia, and is a great place to stop for local craft beer and a bite to eat after hitting the slopes. We wish all the best to our student-athletes during this basketball season. Go profile. Boudreau Septic is a family-owned and operated business offering new septic installations and maintenance service since 1952. They service over 30 towns in New Hampshire and Vermont and the upper Connecticut River Valley, proudly providing fast, courteous service to their customers, whether <coughs> that be commercial properties or municipalities, veteran and senior citizen discounts available. Find them online at boudreauxseptic.com. All right, start the second quarter. Woodsville starting off here. I think the thing is, Jonathan, you know, that high post area is wide open, and every time Woodsville gets the ball there, I mean, they, they can do pretty much what they want. So, look, I would think if they look to continue to attack that. Well, up to the other end, Roby gets it ahead after the uh, turnover. And he's up to, he's got eight points now. And now the lead is his biggest point at six. <coughs> Profile extending that zone out a little bit more. Newcomb had it. That looked like they were setting up the play for him to take a three, but uh, he had a defender in his face before he could take the shot. Baseline, Kingsbury feeds Boudreaux. Now for Connor Newcomb, who fakes the three. Gets tied up, and he's going to be called for traveling. Ooh. I don't know about that one. That was a nice move, I thought. This official standing a lot closer than I am to the play. It's 15-9 to nine in favor of Woodsville. Or, I'm sorry, in favor of Profile. Wakeham tries to dribble to the basket. Feeds it to Plant, and now back out for Leslie's three. No good. Plant grabs the offensive rebound, though, and finds Roby. Tries to go by Walker, gets the runner up. No good. This time, Kingsbury comes away with the rebound. So it's the Robies, Plant, Wakeham, and Leslie. Baseline feed. Oh, great ball movement. Boudreaux finishes it off. He's got seven. And yeah. it's 15-11. Yeah, really good ball movement right there. Hit that gap on that, uh, in that baseline on that zone. Roby with a three, and that's good. Josh Roby has 11, and it's 18-11. to 11. Boudreaux in the high post. Hands off to Walker. Baseline feed for the three and blocked. Good defense. Good job switching over there by Plant as he got over there and blocked the shot by uh, Houston. But it will go back to Woodsville. Newcomb feeds in the high post. Boudreaux lobbed down low and tapped away, but right back out to Connor Houston. Now he feeds Walker. Boudreaux fakes the three. Lobbed across for 
Houston, and they slow it right back down again. Boudreau with the runner. Front iron no good, and grabbing the rebound is Alex Leslie. He wanted a baseball pass for Wakeham, but thought base better of it. Now the runner is up and banked in by Josh Roby, who is just piling up points. He's got 13, and the lead is now 9, and Jamie Walker is going to call for a full timeout with his team trailing by the biggest margin that they've been trailing by. They've been outscored now 12-2 to in this run. And H.P. Cummings Construction Company is a full-service construction management firm serving Vermont and New Hampshire. From the initial planning phase through construction, H.P. Cummings is your trusted partner. Contact them today to discuss your next project or find out more at hpcummings.com. And start something new at Crosstown Motors right now through January 31st. The team at Crosstown Motors is excited to spotlight the official vehicle of winter, Jeep Grand Cherokee, at the best prices. How about a new 2024 Grand Cherokee two-row or three-row? We have over a dozen to choose from. Save up to $7,800 on all limited limited ice engine models. That's at Crosstown Motors in Littleton, New Hampshire. So, Jamie, a good run here by the uh, profile Patriots. Yeah, so far, um, you know, Woodsville's getting some good looks. They just, they've missed some easy shots. And then profile, once they get out and running there, they're pretty tough. Josh Roby has outscored them by himself. He's got 13. Ryan Walker now feeds Boudreaux. Connor Houston takes the three. And... Nothing but air there as Wakeham grabs the rebound. They wanted to run, but uh, thought better of it. And he tries a crossover, now feeds back to Carson. Now hands off Wakeham. Wakeham is a big physical guy out there as uh, Leslie tried to go baseline. He got double teamed and then had the ball knocked out of bounds. Woodsville back to their starting lineup. And with the exception of Jackson Clough being replaced by Wakeham, the Patriots have their starting lineup out on the floor. Roby, looked like he wanted to take the shot, but they put uh, put Kingsbury on him that time, so there's a big height advantage for Kingsbury, and now driving Wakeham, oh, good job poking it away by Walker, but uh, Leslie finds it back to uh, Roby, the runner is up, and good. Well, he's, that's the second or third time he's hit that runner like that. Yeah. Moving with his uh, to his left and then uh, shooting it back with his right hand. Roby knocks the ball on the pass attempt. 14-2 run here by profile since, uh, since Boudreaux made that three-point play. Good feed for Boudreaux. He wanted the quick pass underneath, but it was defensed nicely. Boudreaux will try again from just inside the free throw line. Doesn't get the roll, but Kingsbury gets the rebound and sticks the putback. Boy, they needed that one. But, you know, the initial shot was a good shot. It just said Woodsville's getting decent looks. They just can't hit him. Well, let's see if that changes at all during the course of the game. Plant with Newcomb right on him. Feeds baseline for Leslie, who goes up and under. That was a heck of a move there by Alex Leslie. And it's now... 24-13. Boudreaux to Newcomb. He'll take the three. And they finally got one to fall. And it's now 24-16. Newcomb needed that one. He does, I think that was the fourth three he had taken. That was the first one he got to go, go down. Roby gets it up and good again. Roby knows how to <laughs> knows how to control the ball. He's got 11 points here in this uh, second quarter, all but two of the profile points in the quarter. Newcomb feeds Kingsbury. Ten-point lead by profile right now. They've really been shooting well. Three from the corner by Houston. A little bit long and. Kingsbury had the rebound eventually tapped back to Walker. And a couple players got tangled up under the basket, so the referee stops play. And coming back in will be Mike Hogan. He's going to replace Connor Houston. 
Walker will inbounds from right uh, below us. Walker hasn't tried a lot of shots so far. No. Nope. In the game against Littleton, he drove to the basket a lot. Kingsbury has it swatted from behind. There's a good defensive play there by Wakeham. Yep, and double a double dribble, dribble called against Plant. So how well is this game being played, Jamie? That's seven turnovers combined between the two teams in almost two quarters of basketball. So that's pretty solid. Yep. Not a lot of pressure being put on the ball. And there's a turnover. <laughs> kind of unforced, really. As... Uh, it's interesting because Hogan was in the high post and he tried to go to, towards the baseline to Boudreaux and the throw was the pass was just a bit too high. We're gonna take him to make an attempt to get some updates from the other games as Carson Roby's shot is off line and Hogan grabs a rebound. Littleton looked like they might be pulling away in that uh, game against Groveton. Of course, they're unbeaten this season, along with Profile. High post feed for Kingsbury. Walker gets to the basket, has it knocked away. They've turned it over several times, uh, several of their last possessions. Pull-up jumper by Wakeham. Misses everything, but Leslie grabs the rebound and sticks the put back. And he draws a foul in the meanwhile, so he'll go to the line. And I think they called that on Ryan Walker. And Littleton, eh, not pulling away that much. It's 50 to 38. They lead uh, Groveton with six seconds to go in the third quarter. And the free throw is no good. Great rebound and grab by Kingsbury. And tight game with uh, with uh, Colebrook and uh, Pittsburgh Canaan. A one-point game with five minutes to go in the third. That's a little surprising. Wakeham. Holding outside the three-point line and handed off now to Roby, who flips it down to Leslie, who backs it on Hogan and gets it up and good. So Leslie, six points here in this quarter. All the points have been scored by Roby and Leslie in this uh, second quarter. It's 30-16. to 16. Leads up at its highest point of 14 points. Yeah, I don't think that's much of a surprise probably to anybody that those two are the doing all, all the scoring. Ball knocked out of bounds after the miss by Boudreaux. Roby has 11 points in this quarter, 17 for the game, and then Leslie has eight. Baseline feed. And now lob down low to Kingsbury. Turnaround by Hogan, no good. And the rebound is grabbed by Leslie. That's the third rebound by Leslie. He's done most of his stats here in this quarter. He had two points and no rebounds. Coming into this quarter, he's now got eight and three. He goes to the basket, is able to draw the foul. And they call it on Boudreaux. So Leslie will shoot a couple of free throws. 10.2 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. And a big second quarter. If your profile, Leslie hits the first free throw. Nine for him. Noah Francis enters the game for the first time. That's probably more than anything else, just to avoid anybody picking up a needless foul that's doing a lot of playing. Leslie now has 10 points. It's handed off to Walker. And he loses it. Goes behind the back. <laughs> Gets tangled up and loses up ahead for Roby. He's got a couple seconds, and he lays it up and good at the buzzer. And that is not the way Woodsville wanted to end that first half. But I'm going to guess that that is exactly the way Mitchell Roy wanted to end up that first half as they went from down 9-8. to eight late in the first quarter to a 34-16 halftime lead. Let's take a break. You're watching the Littleton Chevrolet Crosstown Motors NSN Broadcast Network.
Phil needed an oil change, so he visited Berlin City Service. Berlin City always gives him the most reasonable transparent pricing possible, all part of the worry-free guarantee, giving Phil much more time to worry about other things, like the clown who's definitely living in the attic. Relax, Phil. You're with Berlin City. Schedule your vehicle service at berlincity.com. The Orford Service Center is a family-owned and operated business serving the upper Connecticut River Valley for over 40 years. We are a vehicle repair and sales facility located in Orford, New Hampshire that specializes in all makes and models as well as the sales of quality pre-owned vehicles. For more information, check us out on our website at orfordservicecenter.com. Stop on by our facility on Route 10 in Orford or give us a call at 603-353-4555. Everyone at the Orford Service Center would like to wish the Whitsville engineers the best of luck. The Little Grill, where fresh ingredients make great food. Try our Brazilian barbecue, featured every Friday and Saturday from 5 until 9 p.m. All meats cooked over a wood fire. The Little Grill, New Hampshire, that's Little Grill with an E. The Woodsville Area Booster Club is a proud supporter of all Woodsville High School athletics. We're proud to support our student athletes in a variety of ways, including scholarships, events, awards, and much, much more. They represent themselves, their families, and the communities very well, exemplifying all that's the best about Woodsville Area schools. The Woodsville Area Booster Club wishes all of their athletic teams the best of luck. Go Engineers! At Walker Motors, our love of new and used Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram models is what drives us to deliver exceptional customer service at our showroom and service center in Woodsville. Even after you've driven your next car home, on your terms, Walker Motor Sales isn't finished enhancing your driving experience. To keep you safe and efficient on the road ahead, we staff an on-site car service and repair department right here in Woodsville. Curious to learn more? Contact us online, read our available reviews, or better yet, drop by our showroom on Dartmouth College Highway in Woodsville, New Hampshire. Since 1972, W.W. Berry has been providing dependable bus and shuttle services for the people of northern New Hampshire. Located on Route 3 in Lancaster, New Hampshire, the dependable people at W.W. Berry are happy to service any of your transportation needs. They can provide bus services and shuttling for athletics, organization trips, and many other events. Available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Give W.W. Berry a call at 603-636-6100. At the Maplewood Golf Club in Bethlehem, New Hampshire, golf is not just a sport. It's a Donald Ross-designed journey through lush fairways, rolling slopes, and immaculately manicured greens. It is breathtaking views of the presidential range and crisp mountain air in your lungs. It is a fresh challenge and new opportunities on every hole, especially our legendary par 6, the 16th hole. Come play the Maplewood and discover why many golfers consider our course the jewel of the White Mountains. Visit our website to book your tea time and learn more. www.maplewoodgolfresort.com Have you been injured and don't know what to do next? In New Hampshire, there's a law firm that consistently exceeds client expectations. Ward Law Group. A law firm that stands out for its continued support of the community. Ward Law Group. A law firm that's ready to fight for you. Ward Law Group. Remember this, we don't get paid unless you get paid. I couldn't say it better myself. In New Hampshire, there's a law firm for you. The Ward Law Group. WardLawNH.com. Everything you need to stay informed about community events, town and school governments, the local business scene, student activities, and high school sports can be found in the pages of the News and Sentinel, the North Country's trusted hometown paper since 1870. Their dedicated staff provides the area with comprehensive news coverage and door-to-door advertising service, giving their all to produce a great paper week in and week out. To start a subscription or promote your business, stop by their office at 6 Bridge Street in downtown Colebrook, New Hampshire. Give them a call at 6 603-237-5501 or visit them online colebrooknewsandsentinel.com At Fireside Hearth and Leisure our goal is to keep our customers warm and happy through our long winter season As a family owned and operated business we take pride in our commitment to our customers before, during and most importantly after the sale We can install a beautiful new fireplace or stove, a new chimney cap or a video inspection of your chimney Give us a call at 603-838-5125 for all your fireplace and chimney needs. 
Wells River Savings Bank, your good neighbor bank. Our customers enjoy modern banking services from people who care. With historical roots dating back to 1833, many things have changed over the years, but our mission has remained the same, to make our communities better places to live, work, and raise families. Join us, and together we can help build our communities. Wells River Savings Bank, your good neighbor bank. Wells River Savings Bank, your good neighbor bank. Don't let pain or injury slow your active lifestyle. Get back in the game. Whether you have bone or joint problems or you've been sidelined by a lingering injury, Cottage Hospital Orthopedics wants to get you back to your favorite activities as quickly as possible. We believe in a patient-centered environment that focuses directly on your needs. From diagnostic and therapeutic office visits to cutting-edge computer-assisted surgical techniques, Cottage Hospital Orthopedics wants to get you back to being you, pain-free and active. Hello, sports enthusiasts. I'm Vicki Wyman, owner and broker of All Access Real Estate. Our dedicated real estate professionals serving New Hampshire and Vermont are all about connecting buyers and sellers in our beautiful communities. But today, we're cheering for our local high school athletes. Join us in supporting them as they strive for victory. Let's swing for the fences and score big together. All Access Real Estate, proud sponsor of your hometown heroes. Have you been injured and don't know what to do next? In New Hampshire, there's a law firm that consistently exceeds client expectations. Ward Law Group. A law firm that stands out for its continued support of the community. Ward Law Group. A law firm that's ready to fight for you. Ward Law Group. Remember this, we don't get paid unless you get paid. I couldn't say it better myself. In New Hampshire, there's a law firm for you. The Ward Law Group. WardLawNH.com. Crosstown Motors, located in the heart of the North Country, wants to be your first choice for your next new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat, or pre-owned vehicle. Doing business in New England for more than 50 years, we continue to provide exceptional sales and service with a down-home feel. Part of the Auto Saver Group and home of the big deal, check us out at CrosstownMotors.net or visit us at 650 Meadow Street in scenic Littleton, New Hampshire. back here at for the profile school it was tight for a while but uh, pretty much since about the three minute mark of the uh, first quarter it's been all profile they lead 34 16 not a lot of players on the uh, score sheet for uh, either team really Woodsville has seven points from Jack Boudreaux six from Landon Kingsbury and three from Connor Newcomb Profiled 19 big points by Josh Roby, 10 by Alex Leslie, 3 by Caden, Caden Wakeham, and 2 by Carson Roby. And since we've got a moment, let's knock these out. Presby Energy Incorporated is a family owned and operated business that is deeply rooted in the North Country. We deliver home heating fuels, including oil, kerosene, and diesel. Presby Energy strives to provide a level of service that fully satisfies the customer's needs and exceeds their expectations. Check us out online at presbyenergy.com or call 603-823-5298. Iron Furnace Brewing is located at 115 Main Street. Franconia is a great place to stop for local craft beer and a bite to eat after hitting the slopes. We wish all the best to our student athletes during the basketball season. Go profile. And Boudreaux Septic is a family-owned and operated business offering new septic installations and maintenance service since 1952. They service over 30 towns in New Hampshire, Vermont, and the Upper Connecticut River Valley, proudly providing fast and courteous service to their customers, whether that be commercial properties or municipalities. Veteran and senior discounts available. Find them online at boudreauxseptic.com. H.P. Cummings Construction Company is a full-service construction management firm servicing Vermont, New Hampshire. From the initial planning phase through construction, H.P. Cummings is your trusted partner. Contact them today to discuss your next project Find out or find out more at hpcummings.com. Back underway here in the uh, third quarter. Josh Roby to Clough, who probably was in some foul trouble because he didn't really play in that second quarter. Leslie. Now gets into the paint, gets surrounded by three or four guys, finds Clough and just takes the return pass. Wakeham, who has been seeing a lot of playing time in this game. Clough fakes from the corner. 
trying to flash through was Wakeham, but he was guarded, so he goes back out to Leslie. It's a pretty physical game it has been so far. Not a lot of fouls called, though, as Clough takes the three, front iron. Offensive rebound, he takes the return pass and banks it in. So Wakeham grabs his fourth rebound. Now the lead's up to 20. Plus that was a 50-second possession right there for uh, Profile. Been doing that, uh, Woodsville's been doing that touch pass thing the whole game. It worked at the beginning, hasn't so much lately. Newcomb for three, and banks it in. Well, sometimes you need a little luck. <laughs> I, I say it all the time where I uh, live. It's better to be lucky than good. Thing is, Woodsville's going to be able to, they're going to have to start getting a couple stops here. Profile's lowest point total in a game is 71 this year. And the feed down low hits the foot of uh, Kingsbury. Bounces right up to him. Now trying to go baseline. Newcomb, he's out of control, but he finds Kingsbury, who drops it down for his seventh and eighth points. And now it's 36 to 21. Leslie with a severe height advantage over the guy guarding him. He gets it back to Roby. No good. Clough chases down the offensive rebound, and finally it goes out of bounds onto the foot of Connor Newcomb as he stands out. So it'll be a throw in here for the Patriots. Here you see the rebound by Kingsbury for the putback. Trying to force his way in. Oh, great up and under move by Leslie, but he banked it off the uh, iron a little too hard. Or off the backboard, I should say. And now Woodsville with possession. Skipped across for Houston. Feeds baseline. Boudreaux gets the runner up. No good. Kingsbury with another offensive rebound. And he gets the roll. For a left-handed player, he actually uses his right hand quite a bit around the rim to, to finish. Well, his, uh, his role with this team has certainly evolved from his freshman year to this year. And Carson Roby. Ooh, Kingsbury read that perfectly, too. He almost had it. And it almost uh, took out Ryan Walker by the head. Yeah. Uh, I think that might have been the deflection off of his hair. But anyway, 5.05 to go in this third quarter. Clough. Hands off to Wakeham. Seven straight points now by uh, Woodsville as they try to get back into it. And Wakeham surrounded by a couple of guys. Feeds Carson Roby. Oh, oh great. Right open. Oh, great cut to the basket by Clough. He has both baskets here in the second half for the profile Patriots. Flashing through is Kingsbury. He hands off Newcomb. Connor Houston has a shot, but uh, then Roby got back on him, so he thought better of it. High post now, Boudreaux, cross for Newcomb. Turnaround jumper, and that's good. Connor Newcomb doing what he can to get Woodsville back into it. He's got eight now, five in this quarter. Leslie tries to go baseline, cut off. Good job defensively, and they're going to call a hand check on Boudreaux. A tough call right there, considering as physical as the game's been so far. They have not called very many fouls, the officials, in this game. That seemed a little uh, out of the ordinary. Yeah. Roby just goes right back into the backcourt to Clough. Leslie now tries to drive to the basket, and another blocking foul called. I think it was Boudreaux again. Jamie Walker out on the floor right now. He's calling for a timeout. And he is not happy at this moment. No, and Coach Walker don't usually say much to officials. So you know uh, when he says something, usually he's probably probably right. Littleton Chevrolet is proud to support and partner with the Northeast Sports Network to bring you all of the action during the 2023-24 high school basketball season. Basketball during the winter time has been a staple in the North Country and Northeast Kingdom for many years. 
Every athlete and coach who, that participates along with their family and friends should have the opportunity to watch these kids play. Littleton Chevrolet continues to find ways to be unique uh, and give back to our communities. We hope you enjoy this season of competitive basketball and look forward to continuing our support for many more events that are similar to this one now and in the future. Good luck to all the teams involved. And looking for the best fuel, best in fuel economy, the new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee or Wrangler X 4XE is for you. With over 50 to choose from and lease savings of up to $13,500 on select models. Start something new at Crosstown Motors in Littleton, New Hampshire. Inbounded by Josh Roby from underneath the basket. He lobs it all the way back out towards the mid-floor line. Wakeham hands it right to uh, Roby. And now across Clough. Clough has scored the only points. Only four, only four points have been scored by profile. He has all of them so far. Now Carson Roby for three, and that's good. 41-34. Mike Hogan back in the game for the Engineers. So it's Hogan. They have to take uh, Boudreaux out after he picked up 2,000 in about 15 seconds. Kingsbury strong to the basket. He gets the roll. Yeah, I think if I was Woodsville, I'd be looking to get him the ball a little bit more often down there. He's uh, been pretty tough to stall. He has 12, Boudreaux 7, and Newcomb 8. That's been all the scoring for the Engineers. Carson Roby now feeds Leslie. A quick step to go by um, Kingsbury, but then his pass is a uh, miscommunication, I guess you could say, both him and Clough. And there's a turnover. Yeah, defensively, that was good help defense once Leslie started beating him off the dribble. Forced the turnover. High post Hogan. And lob to the baseline, right back to Hogan, who throws the runner up and good. So those are the shots I think Woodsville's got to make. Yeah, they got them all the first half and missed them. They start dropping some of them, and, you know, you got to somewhat be able to limit, you know, Josh Roby and uh, Leslie. That's for sure. He pulls up and takes the jumper. That's his first basket of the second half. And it's now 43-29. High post feed Hogan. Lopped to the baseline. Kingsbury's kind of trapped, and he ends up, oh, he, they call a foul on Wakeham, it looks like. You know, Jamie, I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but it seems like there are games where their officials, if they don't call a lot of fouls in the first half, they do in the second half and vice versa. Yeah, it makes it very difficult for the kids and the coaching staff, that's for sure. Oh, inbound pass, and uh, Hogan in one motion throws it up, although he got fouled. And I think they called that on Roby. So now Mike Hogan goes to the free throw line, and we just got note that Littleton defeated Groveton by the score of 65-54, to 54, so they stay unbeaten. Hogan misses the first free throw. So they stay unbeaten, profiles unbeaten. Those two teams will meet twice in the space of 11 days, and it is a really tight game between uh, Pittsburgh Canaan and uh, Colebrook, a one-point game with... Two and a half minutes to go. Uh, Pittsburgh Canaan leads it. Now Roby outside the three-point line. Exactly two minutes to go here in the third quarter. He tries to go to the basket, gets cut off. Boy, Newcomb just ran right with him right there as he feeds it back for uh, Wakeham. Now sent across for Wakeham's three, and that's good. Big shot right there. He's got a pair of threes, and it's now back up to 17 again at 46 to 29. I think the thing with profile, you know you're going to get points from Leslie and uh, Josh Roby. If they get a third kid that can consistently score, you know, they're going to be even that much more difficult to, to beat. And a good cut nice and no pass. look underneath for Hogan, who banks it up no good. And grabbing the rebound is Wakeham. Roby goes by a couple of players, gets the runner up, and he's called for a walk. He questioned the call for a moment, but then walks away. Boudreaux comes back in, and Hogan goes out. He 
Again, it's interesting. Neither Connor Houston nor Ryan Walker has scored in this game yet. Neither one of them really shot a whole lot. Newcomb with the pull-up, and he gets the roll. Shots falling for Newcomb in this quarter. He's got 10 now for the game, seven of them here in this quarter. As we're down under a minute, Jackson oh, cloth wide open wide under the open. basket, but uh, 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 Wakeham didn't see him. He goes to the basket strong. His opposite number, Kingsbury, tried to draw the foul, but he didn't get it. And it's now 48-31. to 31. That shot no good, and the rebound grabbed by Wakeham. Wakeham goes by a couple of players. Probably could have taken it to the basket himself, but he tried to feed Riley Plant, who couldn't handle the pass. And now back in comes Noah Francis, who came in with less than 30 seconds to go in the first half, again, to try, I'm guessing anyway, to try to avoid a foul call on uh, one of their main players. Walker bolts up the floor and has it swatted away by uh, Leslie. He knew he was there, and he still got it from him anyway. 15 seconds to go. That three is good. Roby with 24, and it's 51-31 now. And I'm watching Jamie. He's about as animated as that guy ever gets right now. And they call a foul as uh, Walker was coming up the floor. Now, like I said, you don't usually see him get on the officiating too, too often. The inbound pass to Newcomb. He goes, oh, that's a good up and under move, and he gets the runner to fall as time expires. So, with all the fluctuation in that quarter, each team scored the same amount of points, 17, and it is now 51 to 33. And Pittsburgh Canaan, by the way, leads 65 60 with a one minute and 11 seconds to go. Let's take a short break. You are watching the Littleton Chevrolet Crosstown Motors NSN Broadcast Network. Back to action here as we move to the fourth quarter. Woodsville was exactly the same position they're in going into the third quarter, trailing by 18. Boudreaux lobs baseline to Kingsbury, who gets knocked to the ground by uh, Leslie. He got him up in the air and uh, couldn't figure out a way to dodge him. So he's going to go to the free throw line. Kingsbury has 12. Newcomb has 12. And Boudreaux has seven. Mike Hogan has two for uh, Woodsville as well. Boudreaux had to sit out a fair amount of that uh, third quarter with uh, three fouls. And Kingsbury hits the first one. So he has scored in every quarter. Kingsbury doing the best he can to keep Woodsville in it. 51-35. It's Clough, the two Robies, Wakeham and Leslie. We really only have used Francis at the end of quarters and then uh, Plant started the game, but Wakeham has been in far more than he has. And Woodsville's only gone with six players. Wakeham. Kind of, kind of tied up, but he managed to find Clough, and he gets it back out to Alex Leslie. Roby. That's the thing. Woodsville's going to have to start taking a few chances. And uh, most part, all the players really can handle the ball pretty well for, for profile. Roby with the runner in the lane, and he gets it. 
That's 26 for him. He clearly wants the White Mountains Community College player of the game. He's travel. Walker feeds corner to Connor Houston for three, and that's good. So he's on the board for the first time. And it's now 53-38. I think they would uh, be well advised to start making as many threes as they can make. <laughs> yeah, they're going to get some stops at this end. Fed across. Clough has trouble with it, but he saves it nicely. And then Ryan Walker tried to uh, make the steal. Plant will come out and Clough will go out. Uh, Plant will come in and Clough will go out. Clough had trouble with his uh, knee during the soccer season, so who knows whether maybe he's still feeling the effects of that a little bit. Roby's inbound to Plant. And he'll set up. Alex Leslie tries to go by Kingsbury. Now they're weaving a little bit as Wakeham is met by Newcomb, who He's got a big size advantage over. Leslie now with Newcomb on him, and he's able to draw the offensive foul. So two fouls here now in this uh, fourth quarter. Let's see if uh, they can maybe, uh, you know, maybe uh, can make, cut make the margin. Run here. Yeah. Ryan Walker, again, has not scored. High post feed, Kingsbury. Newcomb. Newcomb has certainly uh, carried the load pretty good for uh, Woodsville. The runner's up and good by Boudreaux. First, his first point of the second half. And it's now 53 to 40. There's never any quit in a Jamie Walker team, that's for sure. Plant now in the backcourt is challenged. The feed goes to, oh, and they... It looked like they weren't going to call. They called a timeout on that one. I thought they called a foul on Boudreaux. That's what I thought they were going to call, too. So, Jamie, how does it feel to be back in action here as uh, we see the Pittsburgh Canaan defeats Colebrook. So, up there, the northern, the further northern part of uh, the state of New Hampshire, the road teams yeah, you for don't both get... boys and girls come away with wins. Yeah, good night for uh, Pittsburgh Canaan. So Pittsburgh Canaan does, has done extremely well on uh, NSN this year. They took a doubleheader from uh, Gorham that I was at uh, about two weeks ago. And that's, uh, you know, the uh, boys team has a new coach this year. So congratulations to uh, Coach Riley up there doing a good job. They certainly uh, seem to have gotten an influx of talent. Uh, up there, plus getting Landon Haynes back was very helpful to them. Yep. But uh, so let's see. I know we have the standings here, but we'll get to that later. So out of the timeout, Clough is back in the ball game. Again, it's Wakeham, the Robies, Clough, and uh, Leslie. Wake him now. Oh, his pass and uh, just looked like Roby just took his eye off it for the second it was going towards his hands. And it goes out of bounds. So starting lineup back on the floor for Woodsville. Again, very little substituting in this game, at least in terms of number of players. Good switching defense here. And it goes baseline to uh, Kingsbury who banks it up and good. Well, Landon Kingsbury having himself a heck of a game with 16 points. And now Wakeham in the backcourt being challenged. They try to get away from him, and he lost control of the ball. So would you have cut this down to a uh, single-digit lead right here? Quietly, they've, they've come back a little bit here. They were down by 20 after the first basket of, uh, or after it was 51-31. It was they've outscored them 11-2 since. Houston, again, they're moving the ball. They like to use Boudreaux right there at the free throw line for a touch pass back outside, to just hoping to find the open man. Walker swung around, a three-pointer by Newcomb, and oh, that's good. That was huge. Newcomb is third three of the ball game. He's got uh, four. Uh, he's got 15, and it's now 53-45. Plant, or I'm sorry, uh, Leslie feeds to Wakeham. 
And they're really challenging the ball right now. I was going to say, if you profile, you got to get the ball in uh, Josh Roby or, or Leslie's hands, I think. Wakeham. Ooh. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Wakeham may have gotten away with a walk, but he didn't look like his foot slid. Roby being challenged by Boudreaux. He tries to go to the back. Oh, nice great pass. no look to Clough. And they call a foul after he drops the basket home. That was a great pass. I, I don't really care for the foul call, really. I mean, it was kind of a touch foul, considering all the hand checking are let going up the top here. And it's Plant back in the ball game, and out goes Carson Roby as Clough, who did not score in the first half, has a chance for the uh, traditional three-point play to give him seven. And he that was a big it. three points for Clough right there. Nice pass uh, you know, set up by Josh Roby. 56-45. Walker who tries to go by Plant, gets to the basket, and kind of lost the shot, but right there for the rebound, oh. Boudreaux, and it just didn't fall. Pretty much the story of Woodsville's night right there, though. You know, they a lot of high percentage shots that just didn't draw. And the rebound finds its way to uh, Ryan Walker, who gets tangled up by Clough, and they're going to call a foul on Jackson Clough. And the crowd to our left, not happy with what happened right there. Nope. So Jackson Clough gets called for the foul. And a tough break on that end as two balls rolled off the rim for yeah. Woodsville. And they're still only down by 11, although we're, time's getting short. 3-12 to go. Boudreaux cranked the three a little bit long and grabbing the rebound. There is Alex Leslie. Leslie has not scored in the second half. Now going, he goes to the basket this time and try to drop off a pass, but uh, picking it up is Landon Kingsbury, who just dribbles his way through quite a few people. And now Boudreaux thinks better of the three that time. Kingsbury fakes it, goes to the basket, gets in there, and lays it up no good. He tried to grab the rebound, but Plant comes away with it. And again, another tough break off of a... Off of Rim that was not helping them very much right there. No, they, they've had a, a bunch of uh, point-blank shots that, that just didn't drop tonight. Jack Boudreaux now has four fouls, or maybe five. Five was the indication from the scorer's table, Jonathan. So they're going to have to win it without Jack Boudreaux. Mike Hogan comes back again. He's the only player that's come off the bench in this ball game for Woodsville. And Kingsbury almost stole the ball and they get knocked down by Wakeham. No call. Leslie now for Roby. Roby scored seven points here in the second half. A lot more balance in the second half by uh, the Patriots. Plant had a guy about a foot taller than him <laughs> under yeah, the basket. Yeah, good decision so. by, by him. <laughs> it was actually a nice pass uh, by Clough. Clough has been the recipient of some nice passes in this game. Here's a three, and that's good. There are just times it just seems like Josh Roby can't miss. Yeah, I think if you're the defender, you needed to, certainly needed to be up closer to him on that one. Clough muscles the rebound away from Hogan after the miss by Ryan Walker. And we're down to a minute 17 in the lead is 59 to 45 so even though they were held they're probably going to be held to their lowest score of the season profile is going to move to 6 and 0 unless something really strange happens three pointer no good as Hogan grabs the rebound Ryan Walker will move it up the floor he gets in the lane and draws a foul in that game against Littleton a couple of weeks ago he must have hit the floor 10 times in that game doing just that. And Woodsville's going to call for timeout with 53.4 seconds to go. 
So taking a look at the standings here, uh, Littleton moved to 7-0 and today. Uh, Derryfield is already at 7-0. and Profile is going to move to 6-0. and Woodsville is going to fall to 4-2, and but their two losses will be to two of those three unbeaten teams. So they look like they're going to be there uh, towards the end. Uh, Colebrook, second consecutive tough loss for them. They and Groveton are uh, now at 4-3. and three. Down the line, Gorham is at 4-3. and three. With the win, Pittsburgh Canaan will move to 3-4. and four. So um, those are the teams in our, uh, in our area that look like they have a decent chance of making the state tournament. Yeah, I think the, uh, you know, it's basically, a, I believe, a four-team race. You know, maybe five if you throw Portsmouth Christian in there, but you got Littleton, Dairyfield, Profile, Woodsville. They're all going to be fighting for that top four seed. Took uh, Ryan Walker to the last minute of this game to score his first point, but he did, and he makes both free throws. So the only – Hogan missed his two free throw attempts earlier. They made every one other than that. In the backcourt, it's challenged. They get it up ahead to Roby. And reaching in for the foul is uh, Kingsbury. So 41.8 seconds to go. And yeah, not that he had much of a choice there, but obviously that's not the kid you really want to foul. I guess it doesn't really matter yet. And there's another foul by Kingsbury. So now, Profile, after uh, going forward, is going to start shooting free throws. It's 59-47. So it was... Uh, It was 51 to 33 coming into this quarter. They certainly have cut into the margin. They got it down to eight after that three by Newcomb, but then the three-point play by Clough at the other end uh, kind of stopped the momentum for them. Josh Roby will be the one going to the free throw line. He shot two free throws in the first quarter. He's got three threes in the ball game, and that was his 30th point. It's right around his. I think it's slightly above his average. Yeah, he's around 27 a game, I believe. And Leslie's around 22, 23. And let's see, do they call a lane violation on that one? No, he said good basket. I think it was a foul on uh, Newcomb, I believe. Uh, he signaled, oh, Wakeham, sorry. He signaled, signaled Wakeham on the foul, so going immediately to the free throw line will be uh, Landon, uh, Landon Kingsbury. Of course, he, uh, his sister, Mackenzie, was a tremendous three-point shooter for the girls' uh, basketball team at Woodsville, and she ended up going to, I think it was University of South Maine, to pitch for their softball team. Kingsbury now three for three for the ball game, and he has 17 points. Three for three from the line, that is. Make it four for four and 18 points for Kingsbury. And Roby gets it up ahead quickly for Clough. He's going to take it to the basket, and he's going to draw a foul from Hogan. You wouldn't think that Profile uh, would be able to pretty much maintain a double-digit lead with Alex Leslie not scoring in the second half, but that's what's happened. Clough doesn't get the roll on that free throw. But when you got a guy scoring 31 points, you got a good chance of winning. Yeah, I think that's the thing defensively, too. You know, you really need to try to take away one out of those two scorers if you can. And, and you know, if one of the other kids score and beat you, then then fine. But, you know, between Leslie and, and Josh Roby, they're, they're, they're a pretty good scoring duo right there, to say the least. And let's see. I guess they say was knocked out of... Uh, Kingsbury's hands. 61-49 is the score. Walker pulls up, lost his balance, but hands it to Kingsbury, who's going to get a 20-point night after that nifty pass. And Roby will inbound with three seconds to go, and time will expire. And Profile, as you mentioned, remains, remains unbeaten. 
as they defeat Woodsville by the score of 61 to um, 61 to 51. Although they were outscored 18 to 10 in the fourth, so it's um, for Woodsville it's nine, seven, 17, and 18 for Profile 13, 21, 17, and 10. And uh, any any comp comments? Oh, Jamie, pretty good game for the most part. I think. Uh, you know, if you profile, it's a good win, very big win, actually. And, uh, you know, if you're Woodsville, I think you got to look back and see a lot of those six-foot shots that you missed and think that, you know, geez, you know, we lost by 10, and, you know, we, we certainly we, they did a good job on Leslie in the fourth quarter. And, you know, they make some of those shots. You know, it could be a different game. Well, let's review the scoring real quickly for Woodsville. 20 by Landon Kingsbury including 14 in the second half. Connor Newcomb had 15, and 12 of them came in the second half. Nine by Jack Boudreaux, three by Connor Houston, two each by Ryan Walker and Mike Hogan. 31 big points for Josh Roby. Um, Alex Leslie scored 10. Eight by Caden Wakeham. Seven by Jackson Clough. Five by Carson Roby. Riley Plant, the only uh, person who... I was going to say the only person who stepped on the floor didn't score, but if you remember, Noah Francis also got about 40 seconds worth of action, and he did not score either. So as we mentioned, Profile is now 6-0, and Woodsville 4-2. and Thanks to our production team, Dylan Bunnell, Cole Lemieux, and Sean McCaffrey. Thanks as well to Jamie Lesprince, and thanks to our sponsors. Oh. That's right. Sorry. Thank you, Dylan, the White Mountains Community College player of the game. Of course, Josh Roby, 31 points. He scored more than half of his team's points in this game. And uh, my guess is if we did every profile game, he would probably be the player of the game more often than not. Um, but he had a good game, and he, he hit a couple of threes in the second half where he really kind of put a dagger in a little bit. So uh, Josh Roby is the player of the game as sponsored by White Mountains Community College. So once again, thanks to our sponsors, Littleton Chevrolet, Crosstown Chrysler, Dodge Jeep, Ram, and Fiat, Hadlock Group, Best Insurance, and Concord Group Insurance Companies, White Mountains Community College, W.W. Berry's Transportation, Berlin City Auto Group, Maplewood Golf Course, Mountain View Dental, the Little Grill, Orford Service Center, Woodsville Area Booster Club, Walker Motors, Boudreaux Septic, Fireside Hearth and Leisure, Woods, uh, I'm sorry, Wells River Savings Bank, Cottage Hospital, Vicki Wyman at All Access Realty, Presby Energy, Colby Insurance Group, J&J Auto Care, H.P. Cummings Construction Company, Iron Furnace Brewing, Ward Law Group, the News and Sentinel, our very own NSN Digital Download Store, Download and DVD Store. So for the whole crew, I'm Jonathan Zisman. Final score one last time. Profile remains unbeaten, 61-51 to over Woodsville. You've been watching the Littleton Chevrolet Crosstown Motors NSN.